speech is living on a prayer. Now let's find out if it has anything to do with that famous Bon Jovi song from the 1980s off the album Slippery When Wet. So with living on a prayer, please help me welcome Nancy D. Reza. It has nothing to do with that. <laughs> but it does have a lot to do with what would you do on the absolute worst day of your whole life. On the absolute worst day of my life, I prayed. Mr. To Ms. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, it was a magnificent day in the City of Angels. The sky was robin's egg blue, and I remember the sun was shining like a big juicy orange, sending out rays of light across the city, heralding in a new day. But in the small white walled room where I sat with my husband, the only lights we saw came from the stark overhead fluorescence. I had told him that there was no reason at all for him to join me that morning for the results of a routine test I had taken with the doctor that I was sure everything would be absolutely fine. But he sweetened his offer with an invitation to lunch after the appointment, so I said, let's go. Lunch that day did not happen. The word hit me like an iron wrecking ball. Cancer. C-A-N-C-E-R, six, usually insignificant lowercase letters, now lined up like little devils, forming what is, in my opinion, the most heinous word in the English language. And after the doctor uttered it, my hearing completely shut down. Instead of my mind was this raging Texas-sized tornado of accusations and denials and questions. Cancer? Me? You gotta be kidding. No way. Impossible. I'm one of the healthiest people I know. Besides having my tonsils out when I was six, the measles at seven, and chicken pox at eight, I've only spent one night in the hospital my whole life. I wanted to scream at that doctor, you're wrong and that stupid test is wrong. I turned to my husband for confirmation and to know that he also thought I was right. But I was stopped short by a look of sadness in his eyes I had never seen. I turned back to that doctor ready to take her on myself. But she was wiping away tears from her own eyes. And all I could do was ask, why are you crying? Handing me a tissue, she replied, because you are. We went home, husband, just like a man, went straight to his computer searching for answers, solutions. I went straight to my closet, and I started to take out some of my favorite clothing items and place them into plastic bags. My cowboy boots from Texas, the red sweater he had given me for Christmas, my wedding nightgown. I was thinking, I don't want him to have to pack up my clothes alone. And then I realized I had been handed a death sentence, and I was doing nothing, no fighting back for me. This had to change. I had to do something. I didn't know what that something was, but I had to do something. And like so many of us, when confronted with what feels like an insurmountable problem, I prayed. And it was a simple prayer, asking God to please send me the right doctors and the best medicine, ASAP, and if at all possible, send them FedEx with a tracking number. And after I said that prayer, I felt better. And like cold lemonade on a hot summer's day, I wanted more. So I called up all my friends and I asked them to pray for me too. And I was very, very pleased to find out that my wide range of friends had an even wider range of spiritual orations to offer me. My Buddhist friends chanted, Nam myoho renge kyo. My Christian friends laid their healing hands on me as they prayed. My Catholic friends got down on their knees and recited the rosary, Hail Mary full of grace. My Native American friends drummed healing drum songs for me. And my Muslim friends turned to the east and prayed for me five times a day. There was even one very strange little prayer that I learned to completely adore that involved three pieces of meat 
two tablespoons of oil, seven pennies, a brown paper bag, and the railroad tracks. <laughs> very, very powerful prayer. There have been numerous scientific experiments conducted on the effects of prayer and healing, and the results are inconclusive. Just as many people feel they have been healed by prayer as those who feel they haven't. But I ask you to take into consideration the mind-body connection, because I think that's something we could all wrap our heads around. We've all experienced it. If you're under a lot of stress, you get a headache. If you worry day in and day out about your finances, you're probably going to develop an ulcer. Just knowing you're going to give a speech, butterfly party. But what I know for sure is this. Praying and knowing that others were praying for me made me feel great. And I believe that that sent a message to every single cell in my body that da -da 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 the help was on the way. So my cells got the message, perked up, and became even more receptive to that great medicine I had prayed for and was receiving. Prayer complemented the medical treatment I was under. That combination of prayer and medicine is what helped me to kick that disease to the curb forever, never to be heard from again. Fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, and my darkest days, Prayer was the comforter I wrapped around my heart for protection. Prayer became my place of refuge where I could go and truly believe that miracles could happen. Prayer became my big juicy orange in the sky, sending me rays of hope and light on a daily basis. And I know in your times of trouble, prayer can do the same for you. I'm sure someone might be thinking right now, I don't have a prayer. But I say you do. Just listen to the words of the 13th century philosopher, Meister Eckhart, who wrote, if the only prayer you ever pray your whole life is simply, thank you, that will be enough. Madam Toastmaster.